Bases are a huge part of being successful in Power World. They will allow you to accumulate resources and produce essential items quickly and efficiently. The three most important aspects of making a great base are location, design, and choosing the right pals for the job, all of which will be covered in this guide. As usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. Going into this, the current number of bases that can be built in a single world is three, with each allowing for a maximum of 20 pals. This guide will cover the locations and setup of the three bases, and at the end, we'll go over some other useful tips that don't really fit in elsewhere in the video. Starting off, our first base is going to be our home base. It's the largest and most complicated, and therefore will take up the biggest part of this video. This is where we will have our own beds to sleep at, as well as run the majority of our production operations. Because of that, we want to pick a location that is large and flat, free of trees, rocks, or other farmable materials. Personally, I really like this beachside location, situated right next to the sealed realm of the Frozen Wings fast travel point. In my experience, I've also found that this location never seems to be raided. Even though it doesn't appear to be raid-proof, it has never been targeted in all of my time playing. Once you've chosen a location, you'll need to be very deliberate when placing your PAL box. The best placement is that which will result in the most flat land being within the base's perimeter. With that handled, we can start building infrastructure. First off are the PAL beds. We will want to put these grouped up near the perimeter of the base. This will ensure that they are out of the way and take up as little space as possible. We need to build a bed for every PAL that will be working here to ensure that they don't become stressed. Nearby, we can also build a small house for our own bed and those for any friends we may be playing with. I also like to build other miscellaneous items in this general vicinity, such as the Statue of Power, PAL Essence Condenser, and Monitoring Stand. One last thing we need to make sure we build are feed boxes. These will be used by working PALs to stay fed, which is important to ensure their overall health and productivity. We can place one down just about anywhere for now, then move it and build more as we go along. Next up, we'll move on to resource stations that can be worked by PALs for various materials. A key aspect to keep in mind while building is that we need to space them apart. If different stations are placed too closely, it can make it difficult to assign a PAL to a particular station. With that said, we will first build some plantations for food production. Berry plantations are the first available, and four of them should provide more than enough berries to keep all pals at the base fed, as well as produce a surplus. We can also build the other plantations as they become available at higher levels. Three wheat, two tomato, and two lettuce plantations appear to be enough to keep this base very well stocked with food, as well as provide a huge surplus for supplying secondary bases. I should also mention that each of the plantations will require three of their corresponding seeds in order to get started. The Wandering Merchant at the Small Settlement sells berry and wheat seeds, and the Wandering Merchant at the Dune Shelter sells lettuce and tomato seeds. Now let's talk about the PALs needed to do this work. Those being planting, watering, gathering, and transporting. For three of those suitabilities, we can rely almost exclusively on Verdash. These PALs can be bred by mating either Lambals or Cativas with Penking, of which there is a Penking dungeon right next to this base location. They can also be bred by mating Chicopees with Cinnamoths. If you want a more thorough explanation on how breeding works in PAL world, I have a separate guide covering that topic, and you can find a link to it near the bottom of this video's description. The other PAL we will want is Azurobi for its level 3 watering. We can breed Azurobi by pairing Penking with Cinnamoths, but they can also be found around level 20 within the number 1 wildlife preservation zone, which is southwest of the Plateau of Beginnings fast travel point. Just be sure you aren't spotted by any PIDF infantry while poaching in this restricted area. For my base, two Azurobi and two Verdash seem to do a good job at running the plantations, although more are welcome if you have space for them. Nearby, we will also want to build a mill, which is used to turn wheat into flour, an important baking ingredient. 
A crusher is another necessary station, which is used to turn stone into paldium and wood into fiber. Both of these stations also require a pal with the watering work suitability to operate. Nearby accessory structures that we can build include a feed box to store produce and feed nearby pals, cooking pots, and a cooler box. The cooler box requires a cooling pal, and sweepas can fill this role. They are found around level 17 near the Investigator's Fork fast travel point. A little towards the interior of the base, we can put down a ranch. Certain pals can be assigned to the ranch to produce important materials or food ingredients. Lamb balls will produce wool, chickpeas can lay eggs, mozzarella make milk, and bee guards give us honey. Of these pals, only the mozzarella and bee guards are not ubiquitous or easy to find. Mozzarella can be found northwest of the ravine entrance fast travel point, whereas bee guards are found frequently near the snowy mountain fork fast travel point. Moving down the line, we can set up a stone pit. It will supply a steady stream of stones to build structures and generate paldium through the crusher. Anubis are great pals for both handiwork and mining, and one easy way to breed them are by pairing Cinnamoth and Vanworm. Cinnamoths are found around level 20, all around the Cinnamoth Forest fast travel point. And Vanworms are found around level 15, near the sealed realm of the Swordmaster fast travel point. A little further down the line, we can build a logging site, which will produce a steady stream of wood for building purposes or to be processed into fiber by the crusher. The logging site can be worked by any pals with the logging work suitability, and that means that Verdash are fully capable of filling this role. Now is a good time to mention that we will also need to build hot springs to help keep up pal sanity. Regular ones are fine, but high quality hot springs are much better if you are level 31 or higher. I found that two high quality hot springs do the job well enough for a fully stocked base with 20 pals. You may have noticed that cement is required for the high quality hot springs. Cement is made at a high quality workbench or a production assembly line, which we will get to in a moment. We will need 50 stones, one bone, and one pal fluid to make 10 cement. Stones are already covered, but bones and especially pal fluid are a bit harder to come by, making cement a fairly limited resource. For bones, we can actually buy them from the Wandering Merchant, located within the nearby small settlement. They are only 100 gold coins each, so stocking up on them should not be much of an issue. Pal fluids, on the other hand, are much more limited. As far as I know, the only way to get pal fluid is by either defeating or capturing water-type pals. My personal favorite location to farm pal fluid is along the coastline that runs south of the Azerobi Hill fast travel point. Alright, next up, let's talk about what to build near the center of the base. Given that we will be bringing in resources from our secondary bases, it's a good idea to build chests as close as possible to the pal box. We can also build a repair station and the best available furnace, which in my case is an electric furnace. We will then need to build a power generator near the beds to provide the necessary electricity for a high level base. This is a good point to cover kindling and generating electricity work suitabilities. For kindling, Jormantide Ignis are the best option and these are pretty tough to get. The only way to breed Jormantide Ignis is by pairing two of them together. Alternatively, they do have a chance to be hatched from huge dragon eggs found in the wild which is probably the most readily accessible method of getting one. They can also sometimes be found at the number 2 wildlife sanctuary, which is west of the Forgotten Island fast travel point. That being said, they do spawn in around level 40 or higher, making them very difficult to capture. Now, for my electricity needs, I use Rayhounds. These can be found in the northern desert regions, but are much easier to breed by combining a Melpaca and Anubis. Given that we should already have one or more Anubis from breeding, 
and with how easy Melpaca are to find, this should be a pretty easy breeding combo to do. We want to make sure that we have two Rayhounds in the base to provide electricity. This is so that they can switch off when they get hungry or need to take a break. Moving on, not too far off from the pal box, we have a breeding farm set up for producing pal eggs. And behind that, there is a collection of incubators spaced varying distances from a rudimentary heat source, the campfire. With everything covered so far, we should be able to produce plenty of cakes, which are then stored in the breeding farm containers to enable said breeding. The eggs can then be hatched with the help of the incubators, and we want to place the rocky and scorching eggs closer to the fire, and the frozen and damp eggs further away. This is probably not an ideal setup for hatching eggs, but it is more than sufficient in a pinch. Nearing the end of the space's structures, we have our major item manufacturing stations. Being level 45, I have access to the higher grade versions of these various stations, but you can build the best that you have access to at your current level, then upgrade them as you are able to. The first we'll need is the basic workbench or production assembly line. We will also need sphere as well as weapon workbenches or assembly lines. And remember, we want these spaced far enough apart so that we can easily assign pals to work at specific stations if and when needed. We can also build the medicine and pal gear workbenches around this area. With their level 4 handiwork capability, Anubis are the best pals to have working at any of these stations, and we covered how to get them earlier in this video. That being said, for the medicine workbench, we will need a more specific pal that has medicine production capability. My best one at the moment is Petalia, and these can be produced by breeding Melpaca with Vanworm. Melpacas are fairly ubiquitous in low-level zones, and as mentioned previously, vanworms are found around level 15, near the sealed realm of the Swordmaster fast travel point. Finally, after all the essentials are built, we can make some accessory structures that will increase pal efficiency at various tasks. The large toolbox improves handiwork efficiency, and the flowerbed improves gathering efficiency. As a quick aside, beautiful flowers can be found in any of the wildlife preservation zones. We also have the silo for planting, the stump and axe for logging, and the pickaxe and helmet for mining. That covers everything for our home base. Our remaining two bases will both be similar to each other, and much simpler in that they will be dedicated almost exclusively to resource farming. For my purposes, I mainly wanted ore and coal. The ideal locations for these secondary bases will be those with plenty of the desired resource. An added bonus is if those locations are up on plateaus or other out of reach areas, which will make them raid proof. I would argue that the first of these locations is a must. It's on a plateau that is east and a little north of the sealed realm of the Guardian fast travel point. This spot is rich with coal and ore deposits, and is completely raid-proof. Because our only goal here is to mine these deposits, our setup will be a lot more straightforward. To start, we can place a PAL box at the center of the coal and ore deposits. We should put a single container as close to the PAL box as possible, and this is where ore and coal will be brought to. We will need beds for all the pals, and these can be spread out or grouped up, it probably doesn't matter either way. Next, we want at least one high quality hot spring to stave off stress and a couple of feed boxes spaced a fair distance apart. We will need to manually stock these feed boxes with food in order to keep the pals here well fed. Finally, we need the pals. Anubis are the best for mining these deposits, and vanworms are great transporters. A 1 to 1 ratio of Anubis and Vanworms will efficiently harvest and transport the coal and ore to the single container. I have 9 or 10 of each stationed here, but when in doubt, go with more Anubis.
Once everything is set up, we can then make periodic trips to grab the harvested ore and coal, bringing it back to our home base for processing into various usable materials. The second farming base is fairly similar to the first and is located on the plateau to the southeast of the sealed realm of the Swift Fast Travel Point. The main difference with this location is that there are less resource deposits to gather, and this one is limited to ore. Because of that, there is also a ranch set up here for mozzarinas and chickpeas to produce milk and eggs. This helps alleviate the need to manually bring over food from the home base. One unfortunate aspect of this location is that it is near a pool of water, which pals have a tendency to get stuck in. Now, if you want gunpowder, you may consider setting up a base near the Eternal Pyre Tower entrance fast travel point, where multiple sulfur deposits can be found. However, this may require two layers of heat protective gear, both of which can be purchased from the Green Dune Shelter Wandering Merchant. He also sells equivalent gear for withstanding cold temperatures. On the other hand, if you want a pure quartz farm, you'll need to set up operations somewhere in the northern mountainous region, north of the No Man's Trail fast travel point. Quartz deposits sort of look like geodes that have been turned inside out. I haven't found any spots where there are large groupings of quartz deposits. However, given that quartz is not really needed for any consumables, I would argue that you are better off getting it manually and as needed for the production of endgame crafting stations and PAL gear. Okay, with all of that covered, let's go over some additional tips that I couldn't fit elsewhere in the video. First, you can actually capture merchants of various types and then summon them at will in order to purchase items from them. You will get a bounty if you do this, but all you have to do to get rid of the bounty is respawn or otherwise get knocked down. The current merchants that I'm aware of can be found in Dune Shelter, The Small Settlement, and Fisherman's Point. These merchants can also be a great way to stock up on certain materials such as bones and high quality pal oil. Another tip is about transferring huge stacks of materials, or anything for that matter, while over your max weight. Even if you are so weighed down that you cannot move, you can force movement with the grappling gun. Doing this does carry a risk of getting caught on objects though, at which point the quickest way to get unstuck is by respawning. The last tip I have is more of a warning and highlights an unfortunate buggy aspect about PAL World. It's about the tendency of PALs to get stuck on objects or fall through the ground while at a base. This will make them unable to complete tasks and go hungry, eventually getting sick and or becoming incapacitated. The only way I know to counter this is to keep an eye out for it. If you see it happening, move the affected PAL from the base into your PAL box or party, then back to the base. That should fix it, at least until it inevitably happens again. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me in the comments where I'll do my best to help. If you want to see more great content, you can head over to my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat, her name's Marshmallow. Have a great day, if you're here today, have a great Friday, and a great weekend, and as always, thanks for watching.